Hi, I'm Stu. Welcome back to another Luma Fusion video tutorial. And today we're on to part three of Paint X, and we finally got to the painting tools. So let's get started. Okay, so I've got my little video clip on my main track one timeline, and as you can see, it's two children playing with clay. Now we're going to do something in terms of painting with a little boy here on the right. Interesting thing is though, the space I've got available here is actually quite closed up at the beginning of the track, but obviously the camera pans to the right and we get more room to work with further along the track. So we're actually going to be effectively applying our tracker and tracking backwards. I think that's going to work out better for this clip. So the first thing I always end up doing now when working with Paint X is just to basically duplicate a layer. And we'll just go in and change its color and you should always get into the habit of naming your layers. So Paint X, there we go. Highlight the clip, into color on effects, along to our new plugin panel and tap on Paint X. That calls up the presets. We're wanting the first one in the list, track to paint, and there we go. Now, if you've got your color brush here, and you're not sure whether you've made any adjustments that have kind of held on from the previous time that you were using, just tap on the three little dots here and hit reset and that will reset everything back to defaults. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to increase the size a little bit just so I can see the brush. We will shrink that down. We will change the color to just white for the purposes of this demonstration. And then I want to add a tiny little bit of softness. 10% is too much. But if I just play around about 5 or 6% that's spot on. The next thing I want to do is to be able to change the aspect ratio. And I find that just taking it off of being a pure circle and just make it a little bit more of an ellipse helps things. Now if you're right handed, you want to angle this ellipse or egg shape slightly so that you're working from bottom left to top right. So you're talking about an angle of around about between 20 and 30 degrees. The steeper the angle, the greater the effect. So around about there. Opacity you can leave as is. Mix you can leave as is. Blending mode, we don't need to change just now. We can always change it later on. The only thing that we need to do before we get started is actually adjust the size and bring it back down. So for the most part, when I've been using the paint option for actually writing, I tend to find that a size of around about between 7 and 8, 8.9, that kind of thing, seems to work the best. But obviously, the best way to do this is to test it out. So I'm just going to position my playhead uh, around about here. That gives me the most amount of room. And then I'm just going to draw and see what the effect is. And if you don't like what you've done with your colour brush, then go back in and, for example, we could increase the softness. Size is fine, and close down that panel, and then we'll do another draw. That seems a little bit smoother, so we'll work with that. And I'm using Command Z on the keyboard, or you can use the forwards and backwards arrows for a redo and undo, and that will help you to keep a track of the different brushes you're actually creating. Now, in our Track 2 list, we are going to be effectively working in the Track 2 layer, and that means that everything contained within the paintbrush is going to be in track two for our tracker. So that's kind of most important. So what I want to do is give this little gentleman here, so I'm going to create a little bit of a thought bubble. So we're going to go from the side of his temple and we're just going to create a few little bubbles. And then this is always the tricky part, at least for me, create ourselves a little thought balloon. Now once we've done that, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to place one last circle directly on his mouth. Now why am I doing this? Well, that helps with tracking and locking on to his face effectively. You could use the eye, you could use the ear, you could use the end of the nose, but you just find that if you find a contrasted area, you can basically do an extra little bit of paint and that helps lock the tracker in place. Now that we've got our little thought bubble, we need to obviously put some words into it. Go back into our tool and I'm going to reduce the size of the brush and take it down to around about 4.5, somewhere around about there. And that just means that when I actually draw some lettering, so we'll put help, I'll try and do it in a kind of childlike cursive, send Lego. I don't like that E, so we'll just do Command Z, do a more rounded E, then the G, then the O. So there we go. That's our basics in terms of the actual paint option. What we now want to do is go to our move tool and then go all the way over to 
track to and make sure they were actually on the tracker itself and not on an individual brush element. That's important. Now this is your last opportunity at this stage if you wish to reposition. So see how that's grabbing that paint? You've got to do it outside and on the bounding boxes. You can actually just stretch or move and reposition things. I think we'll go about there. I don't mind it going slightly out of frame and then we'll just stretch it up a little bit. Because it's handwriting, you can get away with that. Obviously, if it was an actual piece of type text, like a font, like Arial or something like that, it's going to look weird, but you can get away with that here. So we've got everything in position. What we now want to do is track it back the way to start with. So I'm just going to make one little more movement. Make sure my circle's over his mouth. And then I'm going to press the left-hand tracker to track back the way to start with. And if you've done all these steps, then you'll find that it should track reasonably well. If it starts to lose position from where you want it to be, just basically move your playhead along, press on a keyframe and just move things to get it lined up and then keep on tracking back. And that looks pretty good. It starts to lose it a bit now. So again, bring it back to where it started to kind of lose the plot. Drop another keyframe. Although if you just move it, it will actually automatically drop a keyframe for you. Just reposition it and then just start tracking back again. And again, we're kind of losing the plot again. Tracker's not picking up on his mouth very easily. Now what you could have done is, and you still could do actually, is track another part of the wee boy's body. But I'm just kind of persevering with a keyframe or two here. Then we just track back. It's holding on to his mouth reasonably well. We kind of lose it a wee bit there. So we'll go to there. Again, drop a keyframe and just reposition things. Try back again and just reposition towards the end and you'll see it dropped a keyframe automatically. Now once we've got that, we can go back to here and then track forwards and that should lock on a little bit better. Now it might lose it because of his arm coming up crossing his mouth and that's the case. Then we just reposition things and keep tracking. And it loses a tiny wee bit at the end. So again, this has basically done our initial track. So all I'm going to do now is just tap on the right arrow to go right the way back to the beginning and then play it through. And yes, we've still got the little circle over his mouth just now, but we will get rid of that. That's not bad. And I want that kind of floaty kind of track not completely locked on because of the nature of what it is. The first thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to go into my track two layers and I'm going to find our little circle. Now, if you remember, we did adjustments to the text, or rather we applied the text, I should say. So our little circle is going to be somewhere down here. So there's the H, and there's our circle. So that little colour brush there, I can switch off, come back out of that panel, and we can run it through again. That looks pretty good. So what I want to do now is I want to go right the way back to the beginning, and this time, making sure I'm back to the track 2 layer, I'm going to reduce the size of the actual thought bubble. So I'm going to shrink it down and make it vanish. And then you'll see it pops up for that first keyframe that's there. And that's think, yeah, I think that is fast enough so that effectively it pops out. He has his little intrusive thought and I'm just tracking that to the end of the clip. In terms of doing any trims, we don't want to try and have it disappear again inside just now. I've got it where I want it. All we need to do now is come back out and then from there all the way back out. Now the one thing I'll say, once you've got a duplicate layer and you've applied the Paint X tracker, as you can see here, if you make any cuts at this point, it will destroy the work. So you have to leave this as a whole element. And this is where LumaTouch really need to start making compound clips or nested clips and be able to lock this down so that if you do make a cut to it, it does not destroy the Paint X plugin that you've been working on. So what I recommend at this point is we're just going to go movie, go to render movies folder because I don't need to go out of the app. We select that and then I'm just going to let that export. That's going to pop into our render movies. Okay, now that we've got the clip exported into the render movies file, to keep this Paint X layer here, then I suggest you export a LumaFusion project package and that will keep everything that's on the timeline. That way you can go back to a later stage. What I do now is just delete that layer. So if we drag down the new compounded nested layer and give it a green colour and take it to a point, say there, he looks utterly fed up with himself. Gonna slide that along there and then that way. He's having his little intrusive thought. 
So there we go. That's the basics of the paint tool and how I set up brushes rather than having that really awful airbrush effect just to kind of smooth things out a bit more. And the smaller and more refined you make the brush, it actually gets. So in part four, we'll look at blending in different colours and just expanding upon what you can do with the paintbrush and the colour replacement brush. And we'll see how we go with that. If you've enjoyed the video tutorial today, don't forget to give it a like and share. And welcome to all the new viewers. We've had actually quite an uptake in viewership in the last week or so, which is great. There's a good chunk of you, at least three quarters of you, are not subscribed yet. So don't forget to subscribe to the channel. It makes a big difference. And I will, of course, catch you on the next one. See you later.